Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Community Church at Cedar Springs uh, Adult Sunday School class. We're glad to have you join us tonight. Uh, if you're watching us on uh, Facebook Live, we do have moderators in the feed. So if you'd like to comment or ask a question about our uh, lesson tonight, feel free to post those in the comments and they will get it to us so those can be answered. If you're watching this on uh, YouTube, uh, you can find all our links to follow us and, and past lessons in the description below. Also, as a disclaimer, due to uh, YouTube's uh, user agreements, uh, Community Church at Cedar Springs does not endorse uh, any advertisement that may appear on this video. Uh, YouTube just puts us up there. We don't have any control over that, but we do not uh, promote or uh, uh, advertise uh, any of those uh, for you. So, uh, going with that, tonight we're going to be in Acts chapter 3. We're going to be talking about the, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Uh, before we get started with that, though, if you would, uh, let's take a moment and open with a word of prayer. So uh, if you would, please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we, we just thank you for getting us out of bed this morning. Lord, we just pray that as we go through our lesson tonight, that you will give us some wisdom and discernment to be able to uh, recognize your voice. Lord, we, we look for you to speak to us more than just the words on the page. We pray that your spirit will be present with us, uh, regardless of when we are watching this video or where we are watching this video. Uh, Lord, uh, I pray for those who weren't able to make it here tonight, the ones that are dealing with... Uh, illness, those that are dealing with doubt, that are feeling, uh, frustrated, that are angry, uh, that are concerned about the uh, condition of our country. Lord, I just pray that uh, you remind them that you are in control and no matter what uh, the world may bring, that we will lean on you for our support and our understanding. Lord, we are here tonight because we love you. Uh, we praise and worship you because of who you are. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. So we're going to start out a, a little bit different tonight uh, in our lesson. I've got a video uh, that I want us to look at. Um, so let me see if I can get this to share correctly while we're doing this. And I think I got it. It's a short, it's only a minute, but uh, can you all see that? Yes. Can't hear it. It doesn't have any sound yet, I don't think. <laughs> I don't know. Anybody see a problem with that? Yes. There's no electricity. And it, 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 what they're doing to me uh, is, 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 is more or less all in vain. It's going to take 90 minutes. Hang on a second. It started another video. Yeah, so he's got it. Evidently, it's plugged up. The cord went off screen somewhere. Uh, but he never turned it on. No. And he was just wailing at it. Now, that was a, that was a pretty good job that uh, he did a lot of work in an hour from what it looked like. Mm -hmm. uh, using it that way. Right. But, uh, but man, that, that was a lot of work. And the reason I show that is the author of this week's lesson reminds us that we have access to an unlimited power through the Holy Spirit, and most of us forget to use it. 
And so we try to go through life and handle situations uh, on our own power instead of relying on the Holy Spirit who promised that he would be there for us to go through uh, those trials. Uh, I, I don't, I'm sure Charles has come across people that, that have been doing the, the same thing, that they've had trouble in their lives and coming through and you're looking at the situation and, and it's just like that guy, they are beating themselves to death trying to get through whatever it is where if they would just tap into the power, uh, if they would just turn it on, uh, everything would be so much easier. Well, I, I honestly, in looking at that, think more of Hilda than I do me. Um, and reason being is if children actually knew the power of their education, if they really knew the power uh, of a book, of, of, of opening a book and reading it and learning from it. If it and, and then I'll bring it home. If we actually would read our Bibles, if Amen. we would open our Bibles and read our Bibles and, and gain the power. L let me say it like this. You can receive so much confidence, so much peace, uh, so much tranquility by just reading God's word. Amen. And unfortunately, we do not take the time to read it. You know, it's often been said, if you want, you can hide a million dollars from someone by just placing it inside of a book because they will, they refuse to open the book and read it to see what is inside of it. And really and truly, that's where our power lies. Is, is opening up, but we won't do it. You know, Charles, it's funny that you say that about hiding money in a book. Um, I used to have teacher's assistants in the past, and when they graduated, I would always give them a Bible and mark some passages in it, and then I would put a $20 bill in it, and I've always wondered if those kids ever found that $20 bill. I, I bet you there's there's several of those $20 bills that are still in those Bibles. I, I bet you're right. You know, and I, I didn't yeah. put them right in the front, but they would see it as soon as they opened it. It was right. It was stuck between some pages on one of those that I had marked. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I agree wholeheartedly. Imagine that, though, not opening up enough to actually read and see what kind of a of, of, of blessing that book would hold mm -hmm. for them. Amazing, amazing, yeah. Good, good analogy though, Nick. I, I like that. Yes, uh, yes. You you may hear that again. All right, uh, but yeah, that's what I thought of when I was I was uh, reading up the, the today. Uh, that video just came to mind. I was like, man, we just work ourselves to death, and, and you know, and it's not only just working ourselves to death; we worry ourselves to death. Yes. And there's no, if we as Christians truly believe what the Bible says is true and, and what God says is true, we should never worry about anything. Shouldn't. Now, our human nature and, and Satan will, will push those buttons to put things in our lives or, or put us in situations Right. That we have no control over to make us doubt, to make us fear, and and uh, worry about those situations. But uh, you know, the, the scripture says that why would you worry? You can't add a minute, or they said not a minute. minute. Not a minute. You can't add anything to your life. So why would you waste the energy in uh, worrying over that? But like I said, it's the the concept is easy. the The uh, execution's uh, a little little trickier. Yeah, I think that's in Luke sixteen. Yep, somewhere around in there. Mm -hmm. So tonight, like I said, we're going to be in Acts chapter three. We're looking at uh, the Holy Spirit empowering uh, us and mm -hmm. the apostles. We're, we're talking about Peter and John in, in this particular passage, but. Jesus promised that when he left, that he would send the Holy Spirit, that he would send uh, someone to us 
that would help us. And, and we remember, if we look back in John 14, uh, that his disciples would do greater things than he did. And, and it's, and I don't know, some people read that and think, well, those 12 disciples uh, is who he's talking about. He's not talking about me. Or he's not talking about current times. And uh, if you are a follower of Christ, you should consider yourself a disciple. Mm -hmm. uh, so that applies to us that we have, we have access to the power to do greater things than what Jesus did. Now, that doesn't mean that we're greater than Jesus, uh, but the work that we can do here on earth uh, can at least equal it and not surpass his is what the author or what uh, scripture is getting about. But let's look at uh, let's look at Acts chapter 3. We'll give the first uh, seven verses in this. And it says, Now Peter and John were going up to the temple for a time of prayer at three in the afternoon. A man who was lame from birth was being carried there, and he was placed each day at the temple gate called Beautiful, so that he could beg from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter the temple, he asked for money. Peter, along with John, looked straight at him and said, Look at us. So he turned to them, expecting to get something from them. But Peter said, I don't have silver or gold, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. Then, taking him by the right hand, he raised him up, and at once his feet and ankles became strong. And so let's stop there for a minute, and let's look at what's going, what's happening here. Uh, the, thing, the first thing that really struck me is verse 1. Uh, mm -hmm. Peter and John were going to the temple for a time of prayer at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm not trying to point fingers at anybody or anything like this, but how many of us make time to pray in 3 o'clock in the afternoon? Or it, we're supposed to be praying continuously throughout the day. We're supposed to have a mind of Christ uh, throughout the day, but we so many times get bogged down and, and distracted by the things that are going on around us mm -hmm. uh, in, in that way. And, and we kind of lose sight on that, but we have, we have here that Peter and John are, are going into the temple to pray uh, with the knowledge of Jesus Christ uh, on their hearts. And, and they meet this man who uh, says that he was lame from birth and, and he was carried there in place each day at that particular point uh, to beg. Now, I have to wonder uh, from the from the uh, interaction with uh, Peter and John in verses three and four. Uh, this guy had been doing that so long; he didn't he he really didn't care uh, who was coming his way. I'm sure he got judgmental looks, and, and we also have to look at the the society or the culture at this particular time being afflicted uh, with. Uh, lameness or, or some type of deformity like that, uh, he was considered sinful, uh, regardless of, of what his life is, that he was being punished by God because of a sin that either he or his family had committed. And because of that, he was not allowed to enter the temple. So the beautiful gate was as close to the temple as he could get. And in that culture as well, with the Jewish culture, uh, he wasn't really allowed to interact with the regular people. Uh, that uh, He was something almost subhuman uh, as they would come. So I would say he never looked people in the face. He, he looked them in the feet uh, as they would come by. So when it says they saw Peter and John, I, I, I doubt that he saw their faces. He saw their sandals as they came past the gate. And, and that's what uh, prompted Peter to, to tell him, said, look, look at us. And, and so that, to me, puts out a, a, a model of how we should witness. 
Because there are people out there that have been beat up all their life. They've been told they're worthless, that they're not, that that they're a, a waste of space, that they're just taking up air that somebody else could use, whatever else that, and after so long, we've talked about this, they begin to believe uh, what people tell them that they are. And, and so they not only disconnect themselves from society, but unfortunately we have a tendency to disconnect people uh, that are outside our little social circle uh, as well right well here we go the perfect example of, of and and adding <laughs> to what you were just saying um, what our job is is the same thing that Peter and John also assumed just because a person starts out in a certain situation doesn't mean that they are to stay in that same situation for the entirety of their existence. This is, this is the power of God uh, being revealed to a man who all he's ever known is the outside of the church. All he's ever had to deal with is the outside of the church. How many times have we, going back to, and alluding to what you were saying, how many times have we just bypassed those that are on the outside, not once stopping to ask them, would you like to come in? Uh, how many times have, have we stopped and said a prayer with those individuals? You know, here's, here's, here's my thought on that. This man was put there for a particular reason daily to gain financial, a financial means. This was his job. This was his income. There was a, 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 a thought of pity for those who were deformed, for those who were in such a shape. And, and these individuals that brought him in knew that he was able to make them an income by being in the situation that he was in. Uh, by being uh, uh, lame, they could gain from his his issues. Yeah. See, you know, I, I was, uh, while I was looking at something you said in, in your service this morning too, is the fact that uh, some people think that they've got it all together and better than other people because they come to church. But when we think about it, when we read this, we like to put ourselves in John and Peter's shoes uh, that, that we have a, an intimate relationship with God that we can uh, call him the, the power to use for him and, and uh, heal people and, and have a miraculous power. But in reality, the majority of us are in the position of the beggar. Uh, we are in a position where we have no control. Uh, we, are, we are helpless without yeah. somebody else. Uh, mm -hmm. giving us a handout. And, and luckily for us, uh, the one that's given us the handout is Jesus. Right. right. But until we adopt the mindset of the beggar, we will never be able to attain uh, the relationship that Peter and John had. Well, let's go a little bit further. I said he was on the outside of the church. Uh, we, we have individuals today that are on the inside, but they're still on the outside. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I go back to the, to, to, to the thought of the blue song that I referenced this morning. Uh, your body's here with me, but your mind is still across town. Yep. And, and, and too many times people are not focusing on what they're dealing with. And, and, and their mind is somewhere far away when they should be focusing on the healing, the redemptive, redemptive nature or the redemption that they should be receiving through the power and the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, they are not doing that. This is why we're in the shape we're in. There is enough people who are, are donning uh, a church every Sunday or every Saturday or on Wednesdays or, 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 or whenever you, you, you choose to worship. Uh, there, there should be enough of us that we should be able to gather ourselves together on one accord, one common denominator, which is Jesus Christ, go out and go to work and, and, and bring people in to the house of faith. But what are we doing? 
we're in a rat race routine. We'll come in, we'll worship, we'll shout hallelujah, go home and do and go right back to doing the same thing we were doing before. Mm-hmm. So are we really any better than that beggar? No. We're just and, as and lame. We're just as lame as that beggar is. We're just as bad as that eagle uh, that I was talking about this morning, pecking with some hens. <laughs> we're, in, we're in bad shape. We're supposed to be soaring. We're supposed to be working. We're, we're supposed to be about our father's business, but instead we're pecking with him. Yeah. And, and you know, you've made a, the, a similar analogy for the last two weeks. You made the one with the elephant last week, and you made the, the one with the eagle with the chickens this week. And, and we are in a position where uh, – we get stuck in our sinful state so long that we get comfortable with it. God cuts the tether yes, uh, that we have, and, and we don't do anything about it. We just stay no. where we're at. That's right. Um, and unfortunately, again, that, that's what we're – a lot of people are waiting for God to pick them up, take them and put them on that high wall or, or kick them out of the nest and, and shove them out. Uh, from the analogy you used this morning. Uh, I always use the analogy of people sitting around waiting for the burning bush moment. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. yeah so, the, so the tether is cut. They're free, and they're still sitting in their own mess and, and still sitting in the same situation, and they're waiting for somebody else to come and pick them up and, and, and put them in a better place. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that's not the way that God works. He gives no. us the opportunity mm -hmm. to be in a better place, but we've got to put the work in on that. Exactly. Exactly. It, it's, it's the same analogy of, of, of being able to go out, uh, finish high school, go to college, get a college degree, then go home and sit down and wait for a job. Mm -hmm. But how many college students do that? Too so many. How do we get people past that? How do we get past that? Yeah, well, that? That's the key question. That's Now you're hitting somewhere. We, we have to do what Peter and John did. Look, I, 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 I'm silver and gold. I don't have. I'm not going to throw money at you. I'm going to give you something that is going to be so powerful, that is going to be such a change in your life, that, that, that you're going to be able to stand on your own two feet and guess what? Flap your wings and soar. That's it. He gave them Jesus. And the, and the man got up and walked. Yeah. That 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 that's it. You you're right. We 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 still got to go out. We've still got to be about his business. We cannot sit in our our our, our double stuffed comfortable chairs at church and expect the work of the church to get done. That's we uh, we cannot we cannot ignore the little statement where Peter took him by the hand. Right. Right hand. That's it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't hand. care which hand. He took he took him by the hand. He helped him. Yes. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. We 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 have to in, in other words, basically, Rodney, what you're saying is um, we are not to just tell someone that we're going to pray for them, but we're to actually pray for them and then actually right. encourage them and then actually equip them to go and do the work. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So that was my next point is the fact that he, he reached out his hand and, and to help him up. Mm -hmm. He didn't bend down and, and pick him up. He didn't carry him into the temple. He didn't. Uh, he didn't lay him out and, and massage his feet and uh, work his ankles or anything right. like. That. Right. He extended a hand, and the beggar chose to take his hand, and, and he steadied him up on his own until he could be until he could stand on his own two feet. Mm -hmm. Then once he got his feet underneath him, he let him go and see where he went. And we're going to look at that here in the next uh, passage of Scripture. 
Uh, well, we're, we're skipping a couple of verses, but he goes into the temple and starts praising and, and jumping and, and running and, and praising God for what he has done. And, and when the people see it, they come running. They kind of curious how this guy is all of a sudden uh, up and about when he's been in front of that temple gate for the last however many years. They knew him. They knew who he was. Well, no. they, 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 they knew who they had been giving money to. They, they, they knew him because he had been there that long. They knew that he had been lame since birth. Some of these people had, had complete knowledge of this man. <clears throat> and, and they, I'm, I'm going to go on and say, it. they liked the fact that he was lame. Yeah. Not only did they acknowledge his calamity, but they actually liked it. They liked it to the point that they had become accustomed to it. And they, it gave them, uh, uh, it, they, they were enabled by enabling him. They, they basically, if they had had uh, cell phones back then, they would have took a selfie when they were handing him the money. Yeah. Because they had a pharisaical uh, mindset in the first place. So, 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 yeah, okay, I, you know, I can't do anything about him. I'm not going to bring him inside. But I, what I want y'all to know is I'm going to give him money. Did you give him money when you came in? I gave him money. I did my part. You need to go back and give him money as well. Can you not hear him? Talking among us, Did, didn't you see him out there? You know that so-and-so boy. Why didn't you stop and give him something? Isn't that what we do? Yeah. And, and you know, and then it becomes, a, a, again, in the same sense, we're trying to outdo the Joneses in church. Exactly. Right? Pastor, can, can this be equated to... Um, to us, everyone jumping on board at Christmas time <coughs> and doing things to make themselves feel better and feeding the hungry and giving toys to the children, which are all good things. I'm not criticizing yeah, I, those. I know you're not. Yeah. But the, but the other 11 months of the year, the families still need food. They still need to eat. Their kids still need toys. Mm -hmm. uh, but but we do things during the Christmas season to to make ourselves feel better. We 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 do the toy thing i i i, I want to say that we at least attempt to feed year round we 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 at least uh, now i know what you're saying you're saying this in general but you know i thank god for being in a church to where we do have compassion and we do exert energy to try to help others should yes. we be doing more yeah probably so i i intend on having a great drive just as soon as this pandemic is over Yep. Uh, especially back, I want to go to the nursing home. I want to go by and see everybody there. Uh, I, I, I want to get back to doing something outside and, and you know, bringing in people. I want to go back to feeding people. Uh, I, I, I want to try another uh, fish fry downtown. I don't care. We, we just need to be doing something. Yes. But I, I, I get where what I think what Hilda's saying, too, is the fact, you know, that the Salvation Army deals with people all year round, but we only, most people only ever think about donating to them during Christmas. During Christmas, that's, that's when they put uh, the candle out. They, you know, they take donations year round. There are people in need year round. Right. Uh, but, and, and I, having worked in retail for several years, uh, I, and how people act this time of year, I, I've got to think that it's some way of uh, not only making them feel better, but they're paying penance for their own greed mm -hmm. uh, uh, for that as well. That somehow that absolves them of the, the sin of coveting or the sin of greed that they have. Uh, that if they give just a little bit uh, in something else like that, that it's okay. Uh, it balances out. Their, their actions balance out each other. Mm -hmm. and, and I could see that with uh, with the beggar here as well. These are these are people that are coming to the temple uh, to ask forgiveness of their sins, and so they're buying a little bit of that 
uh, buying a little bit of that uh, forgiveness off uh, yeah. with that beggar there at the door yeah. before you go in. Yeah. It's a mm -hmm. lot easier to throw a couple of copper into a cup than yeah. uh, change your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, it, you get that good, warm, fuzzy feeling. When, you know, by doing that, I, oh, did you see what I did? I gave on my way in. I gave out of my abundance. I know I had my tithe set aside, but I gave out of my abundance and I gave so that I could be a blessing to others. Okay, you did it. In actuality, you're supposed to do it in silence. Your right hand's not supposed to know what your left hand's doing. You, you, you're not supposed to even make a motion or, 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 or let anyone know that you've done it. But yet and still, we'll, we'll, we'll do exactly the opposite. And we'll run and tell it. The part that I love about this is, is the reaction of the individuals when he went in the temple. Let's let's look at that scripture before before we get there. We'll read that so everybody knows what we're talking about. Sure. So we're going to skip a couple of verses and go down to to verse eleven. And, and it says, while he was holding on to Peter and John, all the people, utterly astonished, ran toward them in what is called Solomon's Colonnade. And when Peter saw this, he addressed the people, fellow Israelites, why are you amazed at this? Why do you stare at us as though we had made him walk by our own power or godliness? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied before Pilate, though he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer released to you. You killed the source of life whom God raised from the dead, we are witnesses of this. By faith in his name, his name was made the, this man strong, whom you see and know. So the faith that comes through Jesus has given him this perfect health in front of all of you. So he's stepping on a few toes there, but uh, one of the things that I, I like about this, and one of the things that I personally wrestle with myself, because I... I I think as Christians, we all have a desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to have the faith to go out and, and perform miracles and, and heal people and, and do things in the name of, of God. And, and yet, at the same time, I look at that and I know uh, at some point, if I were able to heal somebody, or heal people like Peter and John were doing like this, at some point it would be real easy for me to forget and start taking credit for the healing. And because of that, I, I think that's one of the reasons why I've never healed anybody. But, uh, but Peter's really clear in this that it wasn't the power of, of him and John, but it was the power of Jesus Christ through them uh, that healed that healed the man. Well, you just answered your own question. Well, I understand that. I know yeah. I I know my pride, and I know the struggle that I have with my pride. And, and again, that's why I said I think if 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 I had the the faith and the power to go by and touch somebody and heal them of whatever ailment they had, after about three times of that, uh, I would start to believe that it was my own power, not not Christ through me. So until then, I'm just the, I'm just the, the nerdy AV guy uh, that does videos. So, well, you, you know, I, I can see that happening with all of us, uh, but here's, here's the issue. Uh, we're called to pray over that individual, let God do the healing and keep moving. Mm -hmm. Well, I know. I'm just saying what I'm saying. We're called to do it and to do it in that order. Here's the part that I love about it. He clutched on to what he knew brought him through. Mm -hmm. Now, he was new at this. 
and 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 if you keep going, he really doesn't accept Jesus until near the end of this chapter. Amen. But 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 look, he clutched on to, to what healed him, or what he presumed healed him, Peter and John. Now, if Peter and John had left him in 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 this shape, if they, if then we go back to what 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 you were saying a few minutes ago about you know taking credit. Peter and John never took credit. What they had to get across to this man was that it wasn't them, but the power that had been they had been blessed with through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And 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 I think sometimes we fall short. That's why nobody can say to me, Pastor, you preached a great message without me saying, uh-uh, no, it was him. Because the moment that you start to take credit, for what he has given you is the moment that you start to go the wrong way. I, I, you, you, you say you're just an AV guy, but I'm, you know what? I, I don't take credit uh, for you being a community church. I give God the glory that you're there because you are important to us. Uh, Miss Hilda is important to us because she chairs, she watches over, and she makes some tough decisions. Rodney's leading our singing. Somebody's got to lead. And somebody's got to follow. But guess what? The only way you get to be a great leader is when you become a great follower first. Mm -hmm. And I think those are things that we need to make sure that we maintain ourselves in our head. Look, Peter and John never assumed that they did anything. But the God that sent them. Now, 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 now go back to... And, and look at what had hap just happened in, in, in chapter 2. Peter stood up and he did what? He preached. Right. And people came. And, and, and here's the wonderful part. He preached in all these different languages at the same time. And people comprehended what he was saying. Amen. But he, all he knew how to say, all, all he knew how to preach was in the Greek. But 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 even though he preached it in the Greek, they all heard it in their languages. Right. So he's covered by the Holy Spirit, even then. That same covering, <laughs> I love this, of the Holy Spirit is with him on his way to pray. Amen. What did Jesus do every time he had to hit a situation? He went away and he prayed. Right. As this man is going as they are going to pray, Holy Spirit still abounding in them, over them, and with them, they're able to reach down, grab this man up, pull him up, and power came into his ankles and to his feet that he never had before. This man had been predestined predestined from the beginning of time to be in that place at that particular time in that particular situation God knew that this was going to happen and this was going to take place and he knew that Peter would have the power to reach down pull that man up and that man was going to clutch onto them and walk into that temple and then Peter was going to go in there and dog talk the Pharisees for what they had done to Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's what the master. And boy, did they get mad. Yeah, yeah, they did. I, I want to touch on what you were talking about in, in uh, chapter two, though. And we're talking about the empower, being empowered by the Holy Spirit. And, and one of the things that I think that a, a lot of people, and I say lay people in this, fail to understand uh, when you're preaching a sermon, when I'm teaching a Sunday school class or, or whatever, we're witnessing to other people, that we're not doing that of our of our own power or our own accord. No. Uh, we're allowing the Holy Spirit to work through this. And I, I'm sure you've ran into that too. When I've preached before, I've had people come up to me and say, you know, when you said xyz that really struck a chord to me and then i have to go afterwards to tina and said did i say that yeah oh yeah did i, I have I, a, I, I have I a really, blackout moment and and, I, and a I lot of times i don't have a clue 
I don't have a clue. I ask people, what did I preach last week? I want to make sure I don't. <laughs> but yeah, so back over it again. There, there's a lot of times that I've finished a sermon and gotten done. And I said, you know, the last 15 minutes, I don't remember what I said. I, mm -hmm. I don't remember, uh, you know, what, what was it or whatever. But if we just surrender ourselves, and we're going to talk about that two Wednesdays, or not this coming Wednesday, but next Wednesday. If we just surrender ourselves, if we quit fighting it, if we just allow ourselves to go with the flow that the Holy Spirit is, is plowing or, or making a path for us to go down, uh, we won't have to worry. We won't have to. Uh, we won't have to do. Well, I won't say we won't have to do anything, but He's going to give us the words. He's going to give us the power. He's going to give us. Uh, the actions to do if we're just faithful. Well, not only that, too, but look at where Peter came from and to where Peter is at this point. Mm -hmm. You can actually switch places with Peter and that man. Peter was in that bad of a shape. And look at the transformation that took place. And guess what we added? The Holy Spirit. Right. You look at where Peter came from and where Peter's at now. And the difference is the Holy Spirit. Exactly. So let's look at the last, last passage of Scripture. And so the, the next uh, four says, and now this, and now brothers and sisters, I know that you acted in ignorance just as your leaders also did. In this way, God fulfilled what he predicted through all the prophets that he, that his Messiah would suffer. Therefore, repent and turn back so that your sins may be wiped out. That seasons of, of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send Jesus, who has been appointed to you as the Messiah. And again, we're, he, he's still hitting the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees in this. But he is giving the people uh, an opportunity, just like he gave the, the layman an opportunity by reaching out his hand. He's reaching out another metaphorically spiritual hand for them to and calling for repentance mm -hmm. exactly now let, let's let, let's address this for just a moment Th this whole thing doesn't end here because if we go further into it now I'm, I'm pretty sure that Next week's lesson is going to be different. But if we go further into this, we're mm -hmm. able to look and see uh, that there are some people who looked at this man and said, no, that's not him. That's somebody else. That can't be him. He's still lame. He's still laying out there. How many times in our life have we made a change and a change has been the, the Holy Spirit has, has worked on us and some people will say, have you seen so-and-so? Look at how they've changed. And then other people will deny it and say, no, that's not them. It's got to be somebody else. Yeah. How, how, how often does that happen? It, it, or, it, it or, has in my life. Yes, ma'am. Or, or they'll say it's not going to last. Oh. <laughs> Major word. Are they just doing that to be seen? <laughs> they'll mess up again. Yeah, they they'll mess it all up. Y'all just wait a minute. They they going back in. They 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 ain't gonna stay like they are. Well, I got news for you. There are people who have made changes that, and those changes have become permanent. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and because those changes are now permanent, you know what? They they're out testifying instead of testifying. Mm -hmm. That they're, they're, they're out being the witnesses uh, of an Almighty God that they're supposed to be. And unfortunately, we're still step. We're still stuck in our position of saying, oh, I'm waiting on them to go back the way they were. Mm -hmm. Quit waiting on them to go back the way they were. Start encouraging them to stay where they are and move on a little higher and then go with them. Yeah. Amen. 
before we finish out this lesson, I want to I want to touch on two similar points uh, that that's referenced in verse seventeen that, that I think is important to us. He said that uh, brothers and sisters, I know that you acted in ignorance just as your leaders did. And so the the first part of that is is ignorance a valid excuse for sin? Is our ignorance of sin and God's will uh, an excuse? Uh, basically, we didn't know any better. And, and we, we say that, that each of us is responsible for our relationship with, with Christ. I can't, force, I, I can't force my relationship with Christ on somebody else. It has to, it, it's, it, it's mine. Uh, I can't give it to somebody else. I can show them Christ and they can, they have to develop their own relationship with them. But we look at this. And so Peter's also talking about not only were they ignorant, but their leaders are the ones that, that propagated the word, uh, the ignorance. So how much more important is us as leaders in the church to make sure that we're right with God and because we are setting the example for those who are looking to us uh, for direction. But so there's a two way street there. We have to make sure that we're safe in that. But the people that are looking to us have a responsibility to look outside of just what we tell them uh, to know. And, and I know as a pastor, you do that too. And we've talked about there are churches that. The churches that don't allow Bibles in their services because that's a that, that's an open uh, you're you're openly uh, what's the word I'm looking for uh, confronting the pastor in his authority by having your own Bible there that everything that you need to know about the Bible he will tell you and and that's not how this works no it's not no. No, I and I. That was one of those uh, same deals there in the Book of Colossians that we were talking about this morning. Um, they were allowing these Jewish leaders to come in, infiltrate uh, into the church, and then lead the people into uh, performing Jewish acts or Jewish rituals, and getting caught up. In, in this uh, uh, old way of doing things. And basically, more or less, they were saying that Christ was, was, was null and void, that, that Christ really didn't have any significant role in what they were to do in order to inherit eternal life. And so Paul had to address those issues with them. Now, if if someone tells me that I've got to get up and, and walk around and shake everybody's hand in the room uh, in order for me to be saved, uh, I'm, I, I don't know that that's going to work for me. Because if I walk around and shake everybody's hand, probably I'm going to get a cold or the flu. Yeah. What I need to do is take the hand of God. in order for a change to, to begin in me. I'm, I need to confess with my mouth. I, you know, he's in, he's in me. And I, I think that's where we're missing it too much. We're expecting some kind of mighty act. Let me, let me, let me go back to, to, to Kings. When, when Elisha told, uh, 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 what's his name? Nathan, uh, to go and, 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 and dip seven times in the uh, in in the Jordan River, and he was like, "No, I ain't gonna go get in that dirty water." And his servants told him, "Well, if he had told you to go and fight a battle or do something really valiant, you would have done it." Sometimes all 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 we're being asked to do through the Holy Spirit is to do something really simple: accept, believe, confess. Yeah, on the other thing, and I'll I'll leave this, and we'll go to uh, prayers or whatever. But there's a lot of people that are under the uh, under the mistaken idea that 
all the Bible they need comes from the pastor. They don't need Sunday school. They don't need small groups. They don't need devotionals. They don't need to open it up during the week while they're at home. They get all the Bible they need, all the instruction they need from the pastor on Sunday morning. And that's it. And unfortunately, uh, this not people that needs to hear that message will never hear it uh, more than likely from this video. So if you're watching this video and you know somebody who is like that, that, that refuses Sunday school or small groups because they think that the pastor is going to give them everything they need uh, to get through a Christian life, show them this video, come to Sunday school, come to Bible study. Uh, we're not doing it right now, but it's virtually. You don't even have to get out of your home. You don't have to put on clothes. You can stay in your PJs and, and watch it on your computer at home. We've mm -hmm. made it as easy as possible for you to easy. participate and, and, and see. Uh, don't be like the guy that we showed in the, in the video in the very beginning of that. Pull yeah. the trigger. Use the power that, and the uh, tools that are available to you in the way that they were attended so that you can uh, increase your walk and your relationship with Jesus Christ. Exactly. That's and right. I'll shut you up know, now. Here's the thing, guys. God is so powerful that he uses all of it. Mm -hmm. He uses the ignorance. Mm -hmm. and, and Peter even references it there. He said, <coughs> I know that you acted in ignorance just as your leaders also did. In this way, mm -hmm. God fulfilled what he had predicted through all the prophets. Exactly. Had they not acted in ignorance, his plan wouldn't have taken place. Exactly. That was a purpose. And and it's, the same, purpose. it's the same way now. Sometimes people act in ignorance, and it is part of God's plan. Mm -hmm. He needs this event to happen so that something else can happen, so that something else can happen, so that a person can be affected somewhere along the way mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. we never know. We, you know, we can't put God in a box. We, no. we can't say, you know, no. he's going to use this and not this, and this is the right, right. way and the wrong well, way. You, you're exactly right. And how many times do we get caught up in, well, this is the way God's supposed to do it. But yes. then again, we're going back to what we were saying a few minutes ago, because everybody else has already figured out, well, this is what God's supposed to do and this is how he's going to do it. No, you never know. We have no idea. No, you're right. You're I, absolutely you know, right. Our ways are not God's ways. We don't see things no. the way that he does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we ain't got a clue. <laughs> we have no clue. You're right. We got a clue. I'm done. I am too. So we will pass it over to you for prayer requests. Uh, again, continue oh. to lift uh, uh, Michelle Farnsworth up as she is uh, continuing with her struggle with brain cancer. Uh, she had a relapse and had to go back to the hospital this week. Uh, uh, she should be going. I think they're going to release her again tomorrow uh, to go back home for a while. So, uh, But just keep her in prayer. Mm. <laughs> the uh, cancer thing is really rampant. Um, uh, Philip Kennedy, Brian Cox uh, were out today uh, doing work ministry uh, on behalf of a lady who is who is who is uh, suffering with cancer. Uh, I, they didn't give me her name, but I'm, I'm lifting that lady up. They they were kind enough. Um, see, we're, we we do have some folks that are out doing doing the work of the church amen amen so they were out with that lady so i want to to lift them up as they do that work uh, again i want to lift up uh, deborah Harmon's family chuck and brandon and penny and all of them uh, that uh melinda that are going through this time of sorrow and i i thank the church for everyone who contributed who prayed who did whatever uh on their behalf uh as they have gone through this this rough time. Uh, again, we we pray for all those that are sick, uh, that are recovering. I, it, it's so many things that are going on. Um, I, I pray for um, Nicole, her baby, and and uh, for uh, her daughter, uh, and that they can find out what's going on with her eyesight. Uh, I pray for marriages. Enough said. I pray for marriages. I pray for homes. I pray for preacher pastors who are are just 
trying their best to hold on and figure out the best way and the best things to do. And uh, just asking God to move and super move in their lives as well. Miss Hilda? I don't believe that I have anything in addition to what you've got. Okay. All right. Rodney? Sorry, I was muted. Uh, I'm good. I'm good tonight. Okay. Well, that's good. Um, again, we, we, we pray for our church and, and, and churches everywhere, and we just ask God Absolutely. to continue to, to bless and to keep them and and help us to keep moving forward. I'm praying for that mm -hmm. day that we'll all get back in church and get busy doing God's work like we should, like we ought to, and 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 give God the glory and all that we say and do. Um, continue to wear your mask. Continue to socially distant. Uh, you know, I know we have a vaccine, but it's going to take time for, for that to get out and and uh, to get to the necessary places that it needs to get to. Uh, Miss Hilda, we were talking about ignorance a while ago. There are people who believe that that uh, this vaccine is the mark of the beast. So I said, well, then what was uh, the polio and the rubella and, and the flu and everything else? Uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. God blessed us with doctors. God blessed us with scientists. God has blessed us with a cure to ailments, uh, one after another. And I'm gonna count it all joy. God does miracles in lots of different ways. Sometimes yes, it's he does. instantaneous and sometimes it's by sending us to the right doctor or the That's right. right person to That's right. Mm-hmm. Amen. And that's where I'm leaving it at. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going there. Not even. So let us continue to lift up people and, and uh, we pray for this vaccine to do its job and uh, to uh, keep us safe and uh, uh, bless us that we can get our restaurants. Let's pray, pray for all those workers who are not able to work yes. uh, along with our teachers. And let's pray for our, our government. Please pray for our government and uh, our, our federal, our state and our local. Today is supposed to be the last day of the uh, the restaurant shutdown, so they're supposed to be open. Uh, Brashear made a statement last Tuesday that he does not intend to uh, continue the lockdown. So uh, hopefully tomorrow they'll be back open again and you can eat. Again. Yeah, I, I think we're we're under nine, aren't we? Do what? We're under nine. Oh, I don't Didn't know. Did we go under nine today? No, I don't know. I've not seen any reports. Yeah, I think we did. I do know that Bashir also said the other day schools could resume on January the 4th, even if the county continued to be in the red. So, yeah, that, that's good news. That's good news. He, he He's getting it. That's what I mean about we, we have to pray for people. We have to pray them through their situations as well. You know what? Is that all we got? That's all I got. All right. Let us pray. Father. Thank you for allowing us this privilege. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for making a way for us. Father, we pray for your guidance, your hand of mercy, and your Holy Ghost power to continue to cover us and keep us. Father, we pray for all of the prayer requests that you've heard that have been uttered this evening, not just this afternoon, but Father, whatever's on our minds and hearts that we don't even want to bring up. Lord, we lift up to you right now. We pray your healing and your blessing. Father, breathe on us, anoint us with the whole armor of God, that these, your people, will be able to stand on you, and that we will have the good sense to give you the glory, the praise, and the honor for what you're about to do. Father, as Nick said this morning, let our minds be set on having a good week. Let, let our minds be in a positive place. And let us give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, all. Y'all have a good evening.